Hello, everybody, and welcome to another video edition of Chalk Talk here on the DK Pittsburgh Sports Steelers YouTube channel and DKPittsburghSports.com, wherever you're watching. I really appreciate it. Let's get straight into this. Steelers defense is absolutely killing it right now, uh, and it's coming from a lot of different areas, but the defensive line is a big reason, big, 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 big reason for this, and I cannot. I'm just going to go ahead and just highlight number 97 right here. He had himself a day on Sunday. And first play of the game. By the way, this right here, number 70, is Rashawn Slater. He's a pretty good left tackle. He's pretty good. However, Cam Hayward, chump, just, nope, takes him. <laughs> Phenomenal job by Cam Hayward. Chargers are trying to run some sort of uh, inside zone here. And, uh, yeah, Cam Hayward just immediately shuts that off uh, up on the inside. So Dobbins is going to try to kick that to the outside. Another guy I want to highlight here. He's going to pop up a couple different times. Really want to highlight Joey Porter Jr. here. Um, and not the type of game that you would think that I would highlight Joey Porter Jr. for. Not necessarily i mean he he was still i mean he still held johnston to two catches for 44 yards he wasn't the one responsible for the touchdown um he had a good game in coverage but he had a really really good game also in in run support and you'll see why um forcing dobbins back to the inside there and then patrick queen lays a boom on dobbins and queen you can see was pumped up right there and i t i talked with patrick queen after the game and uh he was i mean he told me like I had to make a play early. Like I had to make a play early and, you know, going up against his former teammate in Baltimore and Dobbins and both, you know, Gus Edwards too. But, you know, one of the, he wanted to have a good game and he wanted to make a play early. And you can see, yeah, like, yeah, it was good to lay that hit. <laughs> All right. Next play here. Chargers running outside zone. Nothing, nothing. All right, well, why didn't he get anything? All right, let's look at this. Obviously, you can see Keanu Benton makes the tackle here. Larry Ogunjobi helps out with that, too. But, again, I really, really want to highlight Joey Porter Jr. here. Okay, so he is right here. Can't quite circle him because he's right there off the screen, right on the edge of the screen. But, again, to highlight this, for outside zone, the primary attack point is right here. Okay, right on the outside hip of the guy on the end of the line. And if that's not there, if this isn't there, then the, he is going to try to cut this back up somewhere on the inside because what the Chargers are going to try to do is kind of cut this off like right there so that this cutback lane could possibly be there, right? So let's play this forward. Now. One of the main things about outside, one of the main purposes of outside zone is to create a one on one in space. Let's let's kind of write this out one on one in space. Against. This type of guy right here, a cornerback worst tacklers on the field. That's what they try to do. That's what outside zone tries to do. And Joey Porter Jr. The, the, the way that cornerbacks can counter that instead of always trying to be a hero and, and come up and make some sort of big tackle their job is actually to force guys back inside because you've got this guy and 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 this guy who are all there that could possibly eventually win their rep and make the tackle so that's why cornerbacks are trying to force the running back back inside okay so Play this out. There's Porter right there on the edge. He's saying you're not getting out here. So Dobbins is like, okay, that's not there. So, and look, there, and if this is blocked up properly, there's a cutback lane there. But look who's standing in the way. <laughs> Big old 95. Wins his block, gets through, blows that up. Not just Cam Hayward, folks. All right. This is another really good rep for Joey Porter Jr. I know I was highlighting the defensive line here. <coughs> Excuse me. But this is one of the reasons why complimentary football can be on one side of the ball too. 
the secondary helps support the defensive line even, especially on these outside zone, wide zone concepts, because if the defensive line are winning their reps, cornerbacks know that all they have to do is force them back inside. They don't have to feel like they have to be a hero and make a tackle. They just know, okay, well, I know my defensive line is going to win eventually, so all I got to do is just force them back inside. You know, force them back inside. Let the big boys up front take care of their stuff. So there's a reason why I'm highlighting the cornerbacks here. This is actually another one where you're going to see a cornerback and specifically Joey Porter Jr. get some praise here. Because the Chargers run a little trap here. They get this blocked up really well. I mean, that's a really, really nice hole to run through. They get that blocked up well. And so Dobbins hits that hole. And so now, okay, <laughs> Dobbins is like, no way I'm going one-on-one -on -one with Mika Fitzpatrick. Like, Mika, Mika's not making a lot of plays right now in terms of splash and interceptions and ball hawking and stuff like that. But his mere presence right here in the middle of the field, he's like, yeah, dude, you're not getting here. And so Dobbins sees that, and he's like, I would much rather go out here where my receiver is taking on a cornerback, and I can just follow him. So he goes out there. And he sees that Porter is being shoved this direction. So, you know, he's like, oh, screw this. I'll just cut back up field. But Minka does a great job of pursuing and kind of cutting that off. So Dobbins is like, well, okay, I'm going to take my chances with Porter. And Porter makes a good tackle in space. Listen, anytime you can get the running back to go this way instead of this way, that's a win. Even whenever you lose, there's a way to keep a cap on it, and that's what they did on that play. I think that was the biggest game they gave up all game, if I'm not mistaken. 97 here. Man alive. 97 and 56, by the way, blow this thing up. But 97 gets the gets the good gets you know at least part of the credit for the tackle. Um I understand people are gonna be really, really excited about like Nick Herbig possibly getting an opportunity if Alex Highsmith is out for uh you know a long period of time or even if it's just a, a couple of weeks however long it is and the groin injuries are always tricky but this right here i mean this is just great work it almost looks like like they're synchronized together <laughs> because watch watch this whoop they both beat their guy at the same time with the same exact swim move to the outside and see these guys right here these guys right here are actually pulling to go to this side and i can tell you right now that their their responsibility are not 97 and 56 these guys are supposed to be blocking down and blocking down any kind of gap concept if you have a guy in your gap like this guy's probably gonna have to come out here and get queen this is supposed to be blocked down this is supposed to be blocked down blocked down like that's the whole point of it and whenever these two do this kind of synchronized whoop, it blows everything up. Those pullers can't get out in space. It just blows everything up. Just a, another phenomenal rep by Cam Hayward. Another outside zone run here. Again, primary attack point is going to be out here on the outside hip. That's the primary attack point. They're going to run. 97 and 95 both. Just win inside. But also we really want to highlight uh, Beanie Bishop here. Number 31, Steelers. Beanie Bishop. Remember, what what are cornerbacks trying to do in outside zone? Nope. You're you're you can't get out here, so get back inside and let my big guys get the tackle. And that's exactly what happens. A good rep from Beanie Bishop there. Cam Hayward. <laughs> Cam Hayward, dude. I mean, he's and Benton too. Like, watch, watch Benton. The ball's on the nine yard line. And by the time Benton finally gets off of his block, he's already got the center pushed back to near like pretty much on the twelve yard line. That is winning. Pushing your guy back. Outside zone linemen are not only trying to go horizontally, they're also trying to go vertically at the same time. They're trying to do this kind of diagonal up the field. That's what they're trying to do, not go backward like that. Yeah, that's just 
Phenomenal stuff. Phenomenal stuff from the defensive line. All right. You want to know how the Steelers are winning when it comes to a uh, four man rush? Steelers are blitzing like almost not at all. They have one of the lowest blitz rates in the league. And it's because they're only running this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy. Sorry, rushing, not running. Four man rush. Obviously, the Chargers just cannot. Not double negative there. Double TJ Watt. You have to double him. These three right here are going to kind of create a barrier and take out Cam Hayward and Larry Ogunjobi, and they are going to let Rashawn Slater, their very good left tackle, go one-on-one -on -one with Nick Herbig here. That should do it, right? Double him. Seal this off. Boom. Five on four. Not too hard. Only the fact is... <laughs> Nick Herbig just sprints around Rashawn Slater. Wins like it's nothing, and there's a sack fumble. Another phenomenal job. All right. Next play. This one, you kind of see Patrick Queen's, and obviously, again, Cam Hayward. <laughs> Shocker. Cam Hayward made another play. But this one, you really see Cam, uh, Patrick Queen's impact especially when it comes to gap integrity. Remember, outside zone, I'm going to say it again, outside zone, your outside hip. And if it's not there, if it's not there, you have to cut up the field. There should be a cutback lane. And watch the way this plays out, okay? They get this. This does look a little bit more like wide zone. That doesn't look like a reach block on the outside there. So this one might be more wide zone. <coughs> similar principles or excuse me similar principles but either way there would there was going to be a cutback lane here that's a wide open hole too but Patrick Queen is right there not allowing it to happen now kind of shame on 75 for <laughs> for not uh for not getting up to Queen right right away I mean he should be getting up there and sealing him off. But that doesn't happen. And so, yeah, th he was way too slow getting to Queen. So what Queen is trying to do at that point is just read what the running back is doing. But this is where Queen's speed comes into into it, like comes into play. Queen is obviously not going to let him just sprint up this hole right here. Like that would be foolish. So by filling this hole right here, gap integrity, sealing that off Dobbins is going to try to cut through this and try to stay on that track right there but watch Queen just accelerate this way like super fast boom just take off put a foot in the ground go and again Beanie Bishop helping stay out there and take away that edge and Joey Porter Jr. both of these guys right there and right there cornerbacks doing great work on the edge if I get a chance to talk with Grady Brown this week, I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to talk about the cornerbacks doing a great job with their with their ability to seal off the edge in this game because they did a great job. <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> forcing everything back to the inside. And when that happens, and when the defensive line is winning the way they are, <clears throat> they're able to do it. Yes, I'm getting over being sick. Leave me alone. This one, I put this play in here. This is actually a pretty, like, six-yard gain, I think. But I just wanted to put Cam Hayward in this, like, another Cam Hayward play, <clears throat> but mainly to set up the next play. So Cam Hayward shoves it, for whatever reason, stupid reason, they have a tight end on Cam Hayward. And watch what Cam Hayward does to him. Boom. In the backfield. Sorry if I didn't highlight him. Cam Hayward right here. Just shove this dude into the backfield. Nearly blows up the play all by himself. And I put that play, you know, nice six-yard gain there. Okay, you know, no big deal. But I put this play in here because remember that counter the Chargers tried earlier where, you know, they, they brought a couple guys over to try to run these blocks and, you know, running backs to come and try to follow. Well, Cam Hayward, for whatever reason, is one-on-one -on -one with a tight end. And they're actually going to expect this tight end 
to seal off Cam Hayward. I, again, down block on Cam Hayward, I, I, I don't get it. You didn't learn your lesson on that last play and watch what Cam Hayward just did to a tight end. Shove back. And I mean, he just it, and then <laughs> to top it off, Cam Hayward shoves the tight end back into the like the center is trying to pull around here. Center is trying to go around here. Cam Hayward shoves the tight end back so far that it literally gets in the center's way. He can't go the pulling tackle. Then tries to also take out Cam Hayward. And Cam Hayward's just like, screw it. I'm going to make the tackle through the tackle. Watch that in fast motion right there. Regular motion right there. Boom. Through the tackle. I'll just make the tackle through the tackle. No big deal. Cam Hayward, dude. Say what you will, man. This guy is making plays. He is laying bodies. Shoving tight ends around like rag dolls. Good Lord. Uh, believe this is a Joey Porter Jr. play. Yep. This right here is just. This is a cornerback using his instincts. Remember, this more looks more like wide zone, especially with this kick out right here. This is more of a kick out on on outside zone. These guys are trying to get on the outside, and you know allow the running back to try to get outside that. Instead, with wide zone, these guys are trying to kick. 51 in this direction to create kind of a lane like right there that'll end up being right there. And so you kind of see this play out. Okay, you can see, and there it is. There, That hole is there. But that hole is not necessarily for 24 to fill. Some cornerbacks might give this up and try to go fill this and be a hero. Um, that's a foolish idea. Because, you know, 24 could probably see that this guy is going to go get Patrick Queen. And again, he can just think, oh, I'll just get up in this hole right here and make a play. Well, <laughs> watch what Porter does. <laughs> Quarterbacks aren't supposed to do that. They're supposed to stay on the outside here and take this away and force him back to the inside. And Porter, this is where instincts and confidence take over. Because Porter just shoots that gap with speed and makes the tackle in space. That is, that's the kind of stuff that you can't coach. That's instinct. That's, I won't say you can't coach it. You probably could coach it. But the confidence that it takes to do that, not a lot of cornerbacks have a lot of confidence to go up and make tackles like that. Especially in today's day and age. Like back in the day, yeah, you get a lot of cornerbacks who can make make good tackles. But Joey Porter Jr., man, remember where he was as a, as a young rookie, which was just last year. This time last year, dude couldn't tackle. I was I covered the game in Houston. He couldn't tackle. And look at what he's doing now. Shooting gaps, making tackles, almost like he's the third linebacker back there. Phenomenal play from Joey. I uh, believe this is the last play that I have here. Um, Yeah. So, Cam Hayward, again, I just have to highlight him again, man. This is so good. Uh, Cam Hayward's going to come up here. He's going to be uh, double teamed here. But Cam also knows that Nick Herbig is running a stunt to the inside. So, let's get this started. Okay, so Cam knows that he's going to get double teamed right here, and then Herbig's going to come in and fill this. So, Watch, this is also where Cam Hayward's just smarts come into play. He knows the stunt's coming. He knows Herbig's following behind. So he he knows as soon as this guard pulls off to take away Herbig that he can just dispose of this guy right here. And not only does he dispose him, he shoves him back in this direction. Just watch. Shove. <laughs> that, my friends, is Cam Hayward at his best. He's 35 years old, and he's still shoving dudes back like it's nothing. This is why the defense is winning right now, man. They're shoving guys back. Just a phenomenal job by by this defense. They're playing well on all three levels, but big reason why is because they are winning up front. And the second level and the secondary being able to complement that and allow that defensive line to cook, that is helping 
in every way I possibly could. So thank you for tuning in. Really appreciate it. Uh, this one, a little over 20 minutes, but 11 plays broken down. So I thought that's pretty good in terms of trying to break stuff down for you and not be too overly talky. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. This defense, man, enjoy it. They're playing phenomenal football right now. Talk to you guys later. Catch you on the flippity flip.